there's a new category of wearable in town. If you're familiar with things like the Apple Watch, the Garmin lines, the Aura Ring, Ultra Human, Whoop, all of those, those are passive devices that tell you your score on things like fitness, recovery, sleep, and general health biomarkers. For the last several years, I've been playing around with a technology that calls itself the third generation of wearables. I have it right here. It is called the Apollo. And in this video, I'm gonna break down my experience with Apollo so far, the good, the bad, why I'm on my third Apollo device so far, and everything you should know before considering this device. The company Apollo Neuroscience was created by Dr. David Rabin. He's a board certified psychiatrist who's been studying the effect of stress on human health for the last 15 years. Out of his research lab came this device right here. He describes it as a way to shift your stress, your sleep, your mood, your energy, your focus, or social life all without any drugs or supplements. You simply wear it on the inside of your wrist or your ankle for the best effects, and it uses haptic sensation to shift your state. Basically, just very specific vibration patterns. And unlike most drugs or supplements, the more you use Apollo, theoretically, the better it's supposed to work. Essentially, it's training your nervous system to adapt to the cues it's given with certain mental states or goals or outcomes, and the more you use it, it, the faster it gently nudges your body towards that state. Dr. Rabin created this Apollo neurotechnology back in 2014 at the University of Pittsburgh and used it clinically for a while before rolling it out to the general public. Apollo Neuro is high-tech touch therapy. Although where touch therapy tends to only soothe and relax, this one can also uplift your performance and your energy and put you into other modes as well. Here's how they describe it. There's a deep biological connection between your sense of touch and your emotional well-being. When you touch something, the touch receptors in the skin send a signal to the center of the brain, and that signal branches in two directions. One to your somatosensory cortex, the part that characterizes if the touch is soft, rough, slow, fast, hot, or cold, and the second to your emotional cortex, the feeling part of feeling, the part that associates emotion with touch. Now what really caught my eye about this device is that unlike most wearables on the market that seem great in theory and are backed by the occasional user testimonial, this one has clinical research behind it. There are currently 14 ongoing clinical trials and they've already completed seven, two of which are the absolute highest quality of evidence, which are double blind, placebo controlled, randomized crossover studies. And some of the research itself that really caught my eye. A few of their findings so far include users experiencing things like 40% less stress and feelings of anxiety on average, up to 4% lower heart rate, up to 19% more deep sleep, up to 30 minutes more sleep each night, 11% increase in heart rate variability on average, 10% faster physical recovery, up to 25% more focus and concentration, and this was all across thousands of participants in the research. Now, the study that looked into the cognitive performance enhancing effects is what made me want to try this for myself. Dr. Rabin explained in a podcast that just three minutes of Apollo vibrations improved cognitive performance under stress by up to 25%. They also got 25% more questions right on the test. This is a comparable level to amphetamines. So I was excited when the team reached out to me and offered to send me a device to test and review. Is this an application of ancient wisdom modernized? I'll share my results. This right here is not my first Apollo. I've had two before this and I got my first one towards the beginning of lockdown. Of course, I was skeptical that these wearable hugs would actually do anything for my biology. But because I wear an aura ring and I track my biometrics and my garment as well, and I've been doing so for the last seven years or so, I had a definite baseline to compare this intervention against. To my surprise, for the first two weeks, the first 14 days after I received my Apollo, in 12 of them, my morning HRV score noticeably increased to above 100 milliseconds. For context, my average score is around 50 or 60, so it basically doubled. This was on top of my usual heavy workout routine of five sessions per week and one double session per week. The only real change I made was the Apollo. Since HRV has so many correlations with health, longevity, stress, body composition, this alone was enough to convince me that there's something going on here beyond 
on placebo. All went well and I used it as recommended each day passively for about six months until one day while I was in the middle of a sprint workout and field conditioning and I accidentally destroyed the device. It was really my fault because my body weight of 215 pounds landed on it, but nonetheless, I destroyed that Apollo. Fast forward two years later and I got another one in 2023. Now at the time of this recording, I've been using it for almost exactly a year and I've logged thousands of minutes. I was a bit dismayed to see my HRV didn't jump back up the way it did back when I first got my first Apollo. It still makes a slight difference and I enjoy it, particularly for the focus mode and the sleep modes, but the effects definitely are not as pronounced. I chalk this up to a lot more physical contact these days since I'm no longer locked down in New York City and I frequently do things that involve me touching, hugging other people. So since I was touch starved or hug starved, perhaps the Apollo made up in that situation. Whether you consider yourself a physical person or not, biologically humans require physical touch to thrive. There are entire biochemical cascades that occur only through physical touch. And this is one way of stimulating that. These days I have it set up to automatically cycle me through a bunch of different modes every day. When I wake up before my neurofeedback session with the Sensei brain training system. I'll put a card to my review of that system right here. I put Apollo into calm mode, which facilitates introspection and more of the behavior change. Then after that, I put it into recovery mode because I'm usually getting back from either a long and strenuous workout or a long walk or some kind of physical movement. So I put it into recovery to help me prepare myself for the day. After that usually comes energy mode sometime around 9.30, 10 a.m. followed by focus. Later in the day, I will use another energy instead of reaching for a stimulant so no caffeine but just the apollo energy mode and then focus again for an afternoon deep work block towards the end of the day i'll do unwind mode to help transition from work into relaxation and perhaps most importantly for me i have several sleep blocks scheduled every night one to help me wind down and two during the night itself to deepen my sleep and improve my scores if you're liking this so far go ahead and hit that thumbs up so the algorithm knows that this is a video worth showing in terms of the actual sensations of the haptics the energy mode is like short powerful bursts i find it rather jarring and unpleasant so i turned down the intensity quite a bit focus is longer and smooth they're a bit hard to describe calm feels longer and gentler and smooth but over time you learn to differentiate them without even seeing what's playing on the app just based on the feel itself i've also noticed that i initially really liked the energy mode and as things shifted in my own life i've gravitated away from that more and now i'm enjoying focus the most followed by sleep and then recover based on many hundreds of days of using apollo i wanted to share a quick list of some of the pros and cons i've come across with this system first i like some of the ways they quantify things in the app for example in the home page it tells me that i'm getting on average between 20 and 30 minutes of extra sleep every night simply by using apollo now i don't know if that's true per se but it does seem to be helping my sleep quality a bit and that makes it worth it my favorite part of the system is that it's not passively tracking like almost all wearables instead apollo provides active treatments it also seems to have some form of reverse tolerance because with this you're teaching the body how to shift modes and even soothe itself. I don't have any kids so I can't confirm this but I've heard it's great for kids and especially for neurodivergent kids. Other things that I like include that it works very quickly. I feel a shift within just a few minutes of using it. The haptics themselves, the vibration and the rhythm feel very high quality. It's not at all like the vibration you get from a smartphone or other device. I like that it operates silently there's no loud buzzing or beeping or obnoxious noises that are emitted from the device. The physical size, it's not too big and bulky. It's considerably smaller than my Garmin watch and some other wearables. And some people think it looks sleek and cool. It's definitely a conversation starter. My favorite feature is their smart scheduling. Based on your routine and lifestyle, you can choose which program to play when and at what intensity. And you can have a different schedule for every day of the week. I've also had multiple good experiences with their customer support. And when my second device broke down, they sent me a new one almost immediately. And of course, 
lastly, this is one of the few devices that actually has clinical research behind it. Now, on to some of the things that I don't like about Apollo. And the first is that it's fragile. I broke my first device fairly quickly. It's supposed to be able to withstand exercise, and I realized that it couldn't. It's also not waterproof. There's a little port right there that is exposed, and I've found that it is not even water resistant. So you gotta make sure you take it off before showering, before swimming. I've taken it on the beach a number of times, and I'm a bit nervous about ruining it simply by getting a couple grains of sand right in there. Although it's to be expected because creating vibration, that haptics, of course it uses a lot of energy, but the battery life itself isn't great. I usually get about one day of life and a couple of times I've gotten up to two days of life. That'll also vary based on how much you use it and how full your Apollo schedule is, but mine is packed and I can barely get over a day of battery life out of it. And on the topic of battery life, it'd be nice to know when it was running low on battery, like most wearables tell you these days. I don't get any push notifications or warnings. I just notice when the thing itself has about 5% and the little LED right here flashes red, indicating that it's out of charge. For whatever reason, the schedules on my Apollo don't always work. Sometimes it just randomly stops playing. This happens a couple times per week for me and I haven't figured out a solution yet. It just randomly starts to work again. And this is an issue I've had on each of the different Apollo physical devices I've had and none of the app updates seem to have helped over the years. I would also like to be able to customize the durations more because with each mode there is a drop down and you can only select between certain times sleep for example lets you choose a maximum of two hours and for me i don't know why i would want just a single sleep session of two hours i would want a four hour i'd want more customization and while i can add another sleep session it'd be more seamless and a better experience overall just to have greater options available. The biggest issue for me though, is that this company unfortunately has started to paywall some of their features. Like so many others in the wearable device market, they released what they call smart vibes. In order to make your Apollo smart and to learn from you, you need to pay another $100 per year. Now the device itself is already expensive, I believe about $300 and with another $100 per year, that makes it about another $8 per month on top of the multiple $100 hardware price. I don't love when companies do that big bummer and I'm hoping that they're going to change their mind and release those features to all users. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the device. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Across the board, I see some slight changes to my biomarkers, nothing massive, but if you lack physical contact, this could be the perfect device for you. If you want to give it a shot, I'll put a link to my written review in the description below this video. You can check that out and if you use the code URBAN, that should save you, I believe it's 10% on your order. I am an affiliate of theirs, so if you buy through my link using my code, you save and I also get a small commission and if you do use apollo i'd like to know your experience so go ahead and drop a comment below and let's turn this into a conversation until next time be an outlier